So before we begin on action items today, is there any public comment on items not on today's agenda? So Dave, it's, it's Chris, just one request. Um, Heather uh, McMillan, who's joining us today from Trinity, has a conflicting meeting uh, coming up right after this. If, if possible, could we go out of order and take the Trinity plat first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am trying to find where that is on the agenda here. It oh, that's item number nine. nine yes. yes. OK, you. yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to kick us off? Uh, sure. Chris? I'll, I'll give you just a very quick. So this is uh, Chris Lonsbury, Chief Administrative Officer for the county. Thank you, commissioners. We have with us today uh, Jamie Erbacher from WGM Group and Heather McMillan, um, who have been working on the Trinity uh, project. And they, in particular, right now, we're focused on that subdivision piece. Several months ago, you'll recall, uh, we had the subdivision application before you for submission. Uh, that piece has been completed, and now we have the plat for that that we're requesting you to approve and sign. And that plat is in room 206. Uh, for you to to swing by and sign when you have a moment later today, assuming you approve. And with that, I will let Heather and uh, Jamie speak. Thanks. Okay, well, I'll take a, a first stab at uh, Jamie. will talk about the technical pieces of the plat component, but I mean, this is an easy item, hopefully for you all today. Um, it's the technical signing of the document, but we wanted to take an opportunity and thank you again for moving us to the top of the agenda so we could kind of give you an update on the project. Um, it had been a while since we'd been in front of you and wanted to make sure that we kept you in the loop um, as we move through things. And I would say things are um, being, they're really efficient um, and we're being very, um, our, our team is working with more speed than we've done in the past. And uh, it, it's actually an am amazing amount of things that had to happen for this project to come together. So the fact that we're here signing a, uh, a final plat Component today is um, not a miracle because what I have, what I want to make sure I say, and this was echoed by our design team and the entire owner group, is that the city staff, engineering, Cassie, Mary McRae, all of them, while some of them are new, um, they've done uh, amazing things to get us through the subdivision process. Uh, it's the quickest and most efficient and most direct. Um, it's a minor subdivision, but it still has all the components of a large project, and so. They've been very responsive and moved us along as best they could at every point. And uh, you all, if you remember correctly, we have a pretty strict uh, deadline um, to maintain our pricing and our tax credits um, and for the project's finances to work. And so we knock on wood uh, with all uh, things uh, created equal. I think we're going to make it. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I won't say it's 100 percent right now, but the fact we're doing this today is a big deal. And so many thanks to the city and many thanks to Chris for always answering emails and juggling things really quickly. Um, so we're in a really good position. Um, as far as pro other project updates, I would love for you guys to know that we are out to bid. Our design team has the full um, bid documents out. Um, Headwaters Construction is on board. They are managing the bidding to subcontractors um, and that all will come back to us to evaluate costs and current conditions uh, within Probably it's the end of the month. We just made an, uh, about an hour ago. We made a, a couple day change and gave them a little more grace period on those bids. But that's one of been one of our bigger concerns is that the market's been in flux. I mean, you all in every point of your life are touched by COVID and every parts of the distribution chain for materials and um, labor uh, is also touched. So this has been a challenge. But so we're looking forward to getting those bids back. And on a positive note, through COVID. Um, response and federal legislation. I don't normally get to say this, but there was a really positive change that came out in the last um, legislative uh, piece that uh, fixed the 4% in a low income housing tax credit. And that helps solve a lot of our budgetary issues and makes that product that we're utilizing more feasible. And so it was a very positive change. So you probably see a few more of these projects coming through and it'll be of great help and it helps um, the overall budget in this project. So can spend another hour some other day if you guys want to know more about what that means, but it's more equity for the project, no more gap in theory, depending on pricing. So all things are moving forward um, and we're going to keep our um, foot down on the gas and hopefully uh, here in February, we'll be able to close the financing package and we'll let the contractors have fun with the project. So just available for any questions. And then Jamie, I don't know if there's anything else you want to uh, let everybody know or describe about what they might be signing today. Sure. 
uh, you know, just second Heather's appreciation to the city, to the county, uh, adjoining property owners. Uh, Jeff with Dollar Rent Car has been amazing. Rollett with the Ditch Company has also been great to work with. Uh, it, you know, Cassie at the city has really kept a, an eye on everything, keeping projects moving um, or this project moving. Same with Aaron Peehan. So definitely appreciation to all staff, um, including even City Fire. They've been very responsive. Um, so the doc documents today before you are the final plat, and that is for signature by the commissioners as property owners, as well as the um, covenants that go along with the subdivision. Uh, within the covenants, there are a few additional agreements that are referred to. That includes a Maple Street uh, improvements plan, a, a development agreement, um, and a perpetual trail maintenance easement. And those items will be carried out by Trinity. And uh, so reference just to keep documents all together um, for future, if there is future sale or transfer of the property, uh, and just for ease of title reporting. So uh, everything is fairly straightforward. Uh, we sent a draft of covenants and the plat to Chris last week. So I believe you probably had a chance to go through those, but if you have any additional questions, definitely here for um, response if needed. All right. Well, the one thing I would add, Chris, and this is news um, for the group, um, we just, we've been determining so there's some a lot of weeds with this project one thing i think that's pertinent to the commissioners needing to be aware is that at final plat we're trying to determine if the property will be transferred at that point to missoula housing authority and then into the project again a whole series of brown bags if you want to know why we have to do that but we're still trying to determine on that day or the next day um, when the transfer will happen. And so we'll get more information to Chris and keep you guys abreast of that, but there'll be a transfer document that needs to be signed of you know codifying the donation. Uh, but as soon as we get that weed um, outlined, we'll let you know. Great, well, thanks for all your work on this. Uh, I'm glad that it came together as expeditiously uh, as, uh, as it apparently turned out to be. So that's that's good to hear. And great news on the funding. So, um, yes, so I, I move to approve the final plat for Trinity subdivision. I'll second that. Any further discussion or public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Thanks, uh, you guys. Yes. We appreciate you. Thanks, we'll Juanita. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Heather. Yep. Bye-bye. Yep. Goodbye. Okay, we will return to our original order of action items. And the next one is Shannon Terrio. This is a request that the board sign the vendor invoice to receive the county's FY21 junk vehicle funds. That's Shannon. right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, as I mentioned, I think on Tuesday, um, we are eligible for a dollar 40 per light vehicle registered in the county in order to run our junk vehicle program and um, for fy21 that adds up to um, two hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and ninety dollars and this is the process that we use to get the money we ha they have you sign a vendor invoice um, and so that is my request today Great. <laughs> um, I, I move to approve the vendor invoice to, or I move that the board sign the vendor invoice to receive our um, fiscal year 21 junk vehicle funds. We'll second that. Absolutely. Let's take the money. Uh, <laughs> any further discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. OK. Thanks so much, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. Adrian Beck, we have a request the board approve a PSA with Missoula Medicab for transport services associated with the non-congregate shelter. Thank you, commissioners. So what you have before you today is professional services agreement, which is really a, an extension and continuation of an existing professional services agreement with Missoula Medicab, um, who we have been utilizing for transport services associated with the non-congregate shelter um, since May. Uh, what we have found is that as individuals are identified primarily through testing um, as eligible to um, access or needing to access non-congregate shelter, oftentimes they require transport. Um, and so Missoula 
Google MediCab has been working with us, um, like I said, for the um, past several months, but the original professional services agreement um, did expire at the end of the year. And so this is a, a continuation of, of, that, um, of that service agreement. Great. I don't have any questions. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna motion to approve the service agreement with the Missoula MediCab. I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. <clears throat> Lisa Duskavich, uh, I can always count on the health department for uh, detailed uh, motions and items. Uh, so <laughs> do you want to describe what's coming before us today? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners and Dave. Um, I am presenting to you today a master contract with the Department of Public Health and Human Services and M Missoula County uh, City Health Department. And uh, with this work, we uh, receive funding to do two pieces. And this comes through our substance abuse prevention work. And um, one is to $5,000 for a perinatal substance use network uh, coalition and really looking and diving into uh, the population that is being fect affected by perinatal substance use disorder. Um, and so the $5,000 will cover in uh, developing a design guide, toolkit, education, communication materials, trainings uh, with that group. And the second one is $10,000 to create a workplace substance use disorder training for our community businesses. So very exciting projects uh, forthcoming to you. And so we have $15,000 uh, uh, from DPHHS to do this work to make a big difference in our community. So Thanks, that's Lisa. what's before you. And I apologize that it's so lengthy today. I don't know how I had that misstep of so many words in such a little box. No, that's so, okay. More um, details better than less. Okay, well, it's a new contract to us. Uh, this is a master contract, as you see from DPHHS. So we're always getting new contracts to kind of maneuver and better understand the language of. So, but here it is, and we're ready to go do the work. Thanks. Any questions, Juanita? No, excellent. So I, I move that the chair sign the task order. Is Can I leave it at that, or is there another I think, question? Uh, I, think, I think that's adequate. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any Thanks. further discussion or comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Lisa. This is really beautiful. exciting. Yes. Thank you kindly. Have a beautiful day. You too. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Emily, it looks like uh, there's some proposed uh, roofing to be done at the fairgrounds. Yeah, so this project is outside of um, the Jackson contract. I think, um, you know, we've, we've discussed before how um, you know, with Al Brule and the talent that we have on our team, um, we are able to manage some of the um, renovations in-house and bid them out as smaller projects. And it saves us about 30% um, overall on those projects. And so, you know, with the big projects, multi-million dollar projects that are really complicated, we absolutely need that um, general contractor to uh, manage it. But um, some of these smaller things for the buildings that um, aren't getting much done. It's a little bit of lipstick um, and really it, it's borderline maintenance, um, deferred maintenance. So um, we're going to do this. Um, we're not going to construct it in-house, but we're managing it in-house. We bid it. We Al and worked with um, Dave Wall. We did a limit, limited solicitation process. We sent it to um, several local roofers and this was the low bid and the product we chose um, is um, it's not steel. We're moving away from the steel. This is just asphalt, um, but it is a durable asphalt that will last 30 to 40 years. And um, the reason why we moved away from the steel is because um, this is in the historic plaza and we are trying to uh, mimic the original commercial building, which was cedar and then would that cedar would age to be looking more like asphalt than green steel anyways. So. Okay. Thanks. What do you think, Juanita? Um, <laughs> as long as it's not cedar, it's not going to burn. And uh, yeah, <laughs> do the do the asphalt shakes? Do the, do, do they? Do you like the way they look? 
Yeah, they look fine. Um, they so on the commercial and culinary buildings, we actually used a, um, um, a more durable product that has over you know um, fifty year lifespan, and it's um, more like a hardy board type product. But this um, this is fine. This is for the fair office and the floriculture buildings. Um, they're just you got to make choices, and yeah. and this this was a lower sort of priority. We um, yeah, but it's good. Awesome. It's fine. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I I move that we approve the contract with independent roofing. I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Emily. Thanks. Emily. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, Eric Dixon. Uh, uh, looks like we're talking about uh, the bridge on. Bible Lane again, is that correct? And uh, and uh, TSEP? It is. Uh, yeah, we we um, finished the finished the actual work last fall, of course, as you know. But I wanted to keep this going as long as we can, because it's been going on since 2015. So I wanted to get a, a few more weeks out of it. All right. <laughs> So, so this uh, this first one though, since it did start in 2015, that that was the last time we, we requested a reimbursement from uh, the TSEP Bureau in the form of the planning grant. So, at this point, with the makeup of the commission changing in the past five years, this is a signature certification form that the department needs, so that when a reimbursement request is made, this provides the verification of the signatories on those uh, future reimbursement requests. You, you just want to run through all of these uh, TSEP things uh, and we can knock them out all in one fell swoop, Eric? Sure, sure. So that's that was the first one. So that's the signature certification form. Uh, so um, when we when we are ready to request the refund, uh, we needed to tell the Department of Commerce where we want that money to go. So that second second form is the designation of depository. And then the third one, uh, now that we have signature certified and we're telling the department where we want the money to go, we need to request that money. So this uh, um, request for reimbursement form uh, includes all of the funds that we are eligible for reimbursement. Uh, you'll see there that it was four hundred and seventy eight thousand eight hundred and thirty seven dollars. And that is money that we have paid and uh, we have no outstanding liens, bills, invoices, anything like that. So uh, we are ready to uh, request that reimbursement. And then the final form is just the certification from the grantee that we have completed all the work uh, that we said we would and have completed it within the guidelines of the TSEP program. Uh, we did have an audit with the TSEP Bureau in November and we have no outstanding items to address and everything was found to be satisfactory um, with a couple of clarifications that we provided. So. Uh, with with these four forms, we will actually finally be done with this project. <laughs> Eric, so so how have we been paying for the uh, or paying the vendors or contractors thus far uh, prior to reimbursement? Has this been out of our bridge fund or or a different source? Uh, entirely out of our local bridge fund. Yes. Okay, so it will. Uh, this uh, reimbursement will uh, significantly uh, replenish our bridge fund. Yeah, we we uh, I think t in total we're about 1.3 million. Uh, we knew that going in that the TSEP grants max out at $500,000. So with the retainage, this $478,000 is the maximum that we can uh, request for reimbursement. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so we can take all these together if you want, Juanita. Sounds great. Um, I'll move to approve the signature certification forms for items five through eight. Is that adequate? Uh, yes, that okay. will get the job done. I will second that. Any further discussion on items five through eight? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All right, thanks, Eric. All right, thank you. And thanks also, Eric, for for um, representing us on the on the Mr. TMA board. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
Yeah, really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Eric, for that. You're welcome. OK, that completes all of our action items. We'll move on to correspondence. We have two letters that we're contemplating signing today, in which case we will uh, then distribute them via DocuSign for commissioner signature. <clears throat> And if uh, folks out there, uh, I should have said this earlier, if folks want to comment on any item, uh, and especially since uh, uh, we've got so many folks on the line here, uh, if you're connecting via the internet and want to use the raise hand function, that's always useful. If you're on the phone, uh, then I will uh, endeavor to recognize you and give you a chance to speak. And I think both of our phone callers are probably here for the second piece of correspondent so we'll give you an opportunity to chime in if you want uh, so the first one chet did you uh are you out there and want to speak to this kylie's here kylie okay kylie Hello. Please, please do all right so this is i'm kylie paul the natural resource specialist for um, missoula county's community and planning services parks trails and open lands program and this is a letter um, if you recall, we had um, some inquiry from Montana Wilderness Association and um, the Great Fern Conservation Alliance in, um, to requesting a letter of support for the Nez Perce Clearwater National Forest Forest Plan Revision um, to send a letter in support of the Great Burn or Hoodoo Roadless Area. So the Great Burn is where many of us are familiar with. Um, and so this was a letter that that uh, you requested to support basically the continuation of current management of the Great Burn as it stands. So um, that's what we've got here. Yeah, no, I think it looks great. Thanks for putting that together. Any questions, Juanita? No, and I'm sorry, I've lost the letter. Um, but I'm going to motion to we, approve. We don't, we we don't, don't even need anything. motion. It'll okay. just be coming to us. Uh, For via DocuSign. Thank you. Via DocuSign, if you so choose to DocuSign. Yep. So thanks, Thank you. thanks Kylie. And um, we should probably provide a, a copy of this to the Great Burn Conservation Alliance uh, also, or CC it to them. Yep, certainly. OK. Thank you. OK, we are on a roll. So moving on to our second piece of correspondence, this would be a letter to the Board of Medical Directors regarding Sealy Lake Ambulance and concerns that we've heard from the public uh, regarding that. Chris, do you want to say any uh, words as far as this goes to introduce it? Sure, you bet. Uh, Chris Lonsbury, Chief Administrative Officer for the county. So commissioners, yeah, you have received uh, both individually and collectively some complaints regarding concerns for medical care uh, in the Sealy Lake area. So before you have draft letter to the Board of Medical Examiners, um, which employs, uh, sorry, including a CC to the Sealy Lake Fire Board Chair and, uh, sorry, the Sealy, to the Board of Medical Directors and to the Sealy Lake Board Chair um, regarding what those concerns are so that they can be addressed by the respective agencies. As, as you're aware, the commissioners don't have oversight over either fire districts or medical care in the state of Montana. Uh, medical All medical care in the state of Montana falls under the Board of Medical Directors as they license all providers in the state of Montana. And of course, Sealy Lake Fire District and Ambulance Service are a combined service. So this letter uh, is addressed to those two entities to bring those concerns to their attention. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Scott Kennedy, I see that you're out there. Did you want to uh, uh, offer any comment at this time? I do, but I'd like to reserve my comment and afford the opportunity to Chief Lane to speak to some of these items. I just became aware of these issues here last evening. So um, are you in receipt of my correspondences? Yes, we Two are. Of Both of them. OK, can I defer to Chief Lane for now? Yeah, if anyone's on, if Chief Lane or anyone else wants to speak to this, feel free. Hi, my name's Dave Lane. I'm the fire chief for Sealy Lake. Uh, can you hear me OK? Yeah, we got yes. you. It's all yours. OK, um, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. 
Um, I did see your draft again. I I was just notified of any of this uh, last night through social media, so I'm kind of surprised. Looking at your at your letter, it brings up a couple concerns for me. Um, number one, that I wasn't involved in this loop of communication. I am responsible for the operations of our district, and I feel that as Director Kennedy has said, I've I've got most of your information if you just talk to me. Um, there was some statements made that in your letter that are kind of troubling to me. Number one is that you pretty much disrespect our medical director, saying that he's been lax in his duties. Uh, without talking to me, you don't know what his duties are or how he's performed those duties. Um, the other part, a little bit later in your letter, is where ALS resources have been appropriate as recommended by dispatch. Well, you're accusing us of not using the appropriate ALS resources, yet there are other instances within the county where it's obvious that the closest resources are not used. Uh, number one is that Condon will consistently rendezvous with Messi in our district. We are 30 to 50 miles closer than the next ALS unit. However, we're not being used for whatever political reasons. I I just live with that. So there's some, you know, like I said, there's some troubling information in your letter that a lot of it has already been addressed at the fire board level. And again, without communications, you haven't seen our minutes or anything to see that we've addressed these issues. And I don't feel like as we are a fire district, I report to our fire district board, which I believe is why um, Scott Kennedy has been involved in your loop of communications. The other part of the medical examiners, you know, I, I've been attacked by this group of people since I got here, and there's been a lot of negative negativity towards our department before I got here. So this negativity is coming from a group of people that have terminated um, communication, have terminated their relationship with the district, whether voluntarily or not. So they're misdirecting their anger, misdirecting it towards my staff and my administration. The statements in your letter that talk about not receiving adequate care and they talk about response times, to what standard are they holding us? As a small volunteer department doing the things that we can do, we're trying to hire people. We don't have the funds to do that. That will be addressed shortly. We are trying to make improvements to make things happen better. But again, nobody's talked to us about these, these questions other than the people making the complaints. They come to our meetings, they're public meetings, so all of their complaints and statements are in our minutes. The responses from our board and myself are also in the minutes. And, you know, if they're not getting the answer that they expect, which some have said they want me to, to be fired, well, that's up to the board, the to the fire board. Um, if they're not getting, if I'm not fired, then they're not getting the result they want. So that now they're going to where they think they might get a better resolution. I don't know because they're not talking to me. But I do see your letter that talks about these things. Many of those things have already been addressed in our board, our fire board meetings. And I just wanted the opportunity to let you know about the things that are that are bothering me as far as our operations. And thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Kennedy has anything else or not, but I'll I'll step aside right now. Thanks, Chief Lane. Uh, Mr. Kennedy. Um, yes, like in my recent this morning correspondence to you, the second one kind of outlined some of my concerns. Um, you know, not having any knowledge of this and this being prepared 
without that knowledge and not even given the chance for any facts or rebuttal, as Chief Lane points out. We've addressed these issues over the years, and, and not just the last year or two. This has been ongoing. You always have issues and concerns, and you deal with them the best you can as a fire district. And I've been around for a long time. Um, Chief Lane has, has brought a lot of positive to the community, and, and those items are not talked about here. It's always that one or two little minor instances or major instances that you try to do better next time. So it is a rural, it is a volunteer, and we are short volunteers as the rest of the country. Um, if people are not willing to step up to the plate, then we're going to be looking at uh, possibly a proposed uh, mill rate increase um, that the consumers will have to um, engage in and approve or not at what level of service do they want. They don't talk about the five minute response calls or the 10 minute. Um, you know, they want to talk about one that's 19 minutes or something. Um, you know, those, those instances happen. They happen with other units. They happen with even commercial services and private services. So I'm just really disappointed that we weren't contacted and had a chance to really prepare for this, for this meeting today. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. And I guess I would just add in terms of context, it's not our role to adjudicate these these uh, uh, sorts of disputes. We've been brought, uh, con uh, constituents in Missoula County have brought before us concerns that they wanted relayed on to the Board of Medical Examiners or, or brought to whoever is in the role of adjudicating these concerns. So that is exactly what we're doing. It, it would not be accurate to say that in our letter we are alleging that there's been uh, lax oversight by the medical director. That is something that someone else other than us is uh, is suggesting is the case. And so we are uh, conveying those concerns of Missoula County constituents by way of this letter to the board and they can use their uh, discretion and their um, their authority regulatory authority to um, decide whether the concerns are are uh, valid or not. Mr. Lane. Go ahead. Um, that was that was part of my confusion with this letter was you're saying that you're relaying information for a group of people or person to the Board of Medical Examiners, but in your letter you're saying that it doesn't say that you're relaying the information. It says that you. Uh, the level of care has been inadequate and oversight by the medical director has been lax. That's whoever wrote this letter. That's their statement. That's not a relay of information. Well, as it's, uh, as it's written, I, I think we'll I think you would need to read the first part of the sentence and I don't want to get down in the weeds here, but it reads the general nature of these complaints is that and then it follows with what you just described. OK, uh, Juanita. I was just going to say say the same thing, and that's the. Um, the, the first sentence of the letter. The Missoula County Commissioners have recently received complaints regarding the level of service provided by the Sealy Lake Ambulance Service. If that is helpful. These aren't. These are complaints that we're relaying and that we've we've heard, not that we are we are claiming ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that is so, correct. So I have a question. What is the county commissioner role in this regarding the Sealy Lake Rural Fire District that is the governing authority? Our role is precisely what you're seeing here and that we are relaying concerns that have been expressed to us. We're, as I mentioned, we're not in a position of uh, authority to regulate or uh, adjudicate uh, concerns regarding the fire district. Uh, we're in a position though of hearing from our constituents and directing their concerns to the appropriate uh, adjudicating body. And, and the appropriate body is the Sea Lake Fire District and the Board of Medical Examiners. Right, and and I guess I would further say if if, and this is my sense that there has, and I'm not, I'm not saying that this is 
correct or not, but uh, there are concerns of some folks that they have not been, uh, uh, their concerns have not been adequately addressed by the fire district, hence the next, uh, uh, I guess, level of, uh, in the hierarchy of, of review of such things would be the Board of Medical Examiners. Uh, Andy Bourne with the Pathfinder, did you have any comments or questions? No, I didn't, thank you. Juanita, anything else? No, I still see Dave Lane's hand is up though. Dave, did you still ha still have something you wanted to add? I I do not. I I didn't know I was supposed to. Do I double click this to make it go away? Uh, that's that's okay. I I've, I've got you handled. There it is. Uh, and I, I would just say I, I have served as a volunteer firefighter uh, uh, with a volunteer fire district myself in the past, and I absolutely appreciate the work that volunteer fire boards and, and uh, firefighters do and the challenges that it is to attract um, members and, uh, and folks with sometimes uh, with a median age below uh, 75 uh, to staff a, a department. So uh, this is no, uh, should not be seen as any uh, indication of our um, lack of appreciation for what you're doing, but it is uh, reflective of what I think we see as our responsibility to uh, represent our constituents and, and direct their concerns to the appropriate bodies. Will we get copies of the specific complaint so we know what we are addressing? Uh, our letter will uh, have to suffice for the description of those uh, complaints. Well, your letter does not specify specifics. And that would be, how does the Sealy Lake Rural Fire District make a decision if they don't have specifics to entertain and review? I suspect that will be up to the Board of Medical Examiners to ascertain how uh, uh, to respond to those complaints. Chris, uh, do you have any other insight on that in terms of how this would play out going forward? So we we do have as an attachment to the letter, Dave, and this will go to the fire board, the, the call numbers that are referenced by the folks who have contacted you. So they will they will have that information that they could look up. OK, thank you. Yep. OK, this letter will be uh, coming to the commission via DocuSign. So if uh, commissioners want to sign it, they can do so at that time. Thank you everyone for joining us for this item. Uh, at this point, we will move on uh, with the balance of our agenda. And uh, we have a few discussion items. The first one is community survey results. Casey, are you going to present this to us? Yep. Uh, hi, Commissioner. Thanks for having me. So I uh, just wanted to bring this up today. Um, the community survey we ran uh, end of May, early June, and then saw results um, this fall from the National Research Center. Um, I've gone through and compiled it and kind of made it into more accessible information to post on our website for all the community to kind of see the results and use. So I'll share my screen and kind of show you what we're looking at. It's posted on the commissioner's website um, through the county website here. Uh, pretty much it lays out basically the process of the survey we sent out our national research center sent out 1700 uh, mail surveys um, we received 538 so we got a great response rate um, and why we did this through a company was to kind of get some scientific results using best practices for surveys to get our, the best representative sample of uh, our constituents uh, feelings about the livability of missoula and um, the services we provide so on the website, you'll have this dashboard, which kind of gives our overall comparison to uh, the national benchmark from this organization that has surveyed over 600 
plus communities across the country um, and kind of lays out where we rank a, a kind of compared to them. And that was definitely a benefit of using this um, to kind of see where Missoula stands in terms of its services um, and where we live. So as you can see here, it lays out higher was uh, 10 percentage points higher than that benchmark. Yellow is similar, so plus or minus 10 percent and then lower was a uh, less than 10 percent of positive rating within it. Um, and then on the left, you have these 10 facets of what they call livability in their standardized survey. So pretty much this dashboard just lets you kind of get an overall view and then as a breakdown of our demographics asking um, kind of breaking out household incomes by age, uh, geographic comparison, which is city residents compared to um, county residents outside of city limits. Um, and then we also looked at housing tenure, so renters and owners, and then uh, length of residency. So as you click through these, you can then get the breakdowns. These will switch down to see the breakdowns of those. Um, and then when it's whole, it's the averaged out. Um, and then you can go through each individual one to get more specific questions within that category um, and kind of see where we ranked nationally for those categories. Um, so just made this tool to make it more accessible to the public and everyone to kind of understand what results we found. I think it's a helpful tool to not only the county as we uh, look at strategic planning and things we do, but also community members to um, see where things need to be improved and uh, how we move forward. And looking forward, we hope to continue doing more surveys similar to this so we can kind of track our progress on certain areas like housing costs if it's something we're working on. So we'll be able to see some kind of feedback loop in our progress towards those goals. So this is great, Casey. Yeah. And maybe you've already said this or it's on the site, but when you're talking about uh, ranking against national trends or experiences, what cities were looked at nationally that we were compared to? Is that yeah, on so, um, Yeah, so on the website there's also um links to all the reports that we got back from the um, national research center and on the appendixes one it lays out every community that it got compared to within the national Great. comparison which is over 600 different communities uh spread all over the country and then we also got um uh, compared to about 18 different counties that were similar to us so had similar population size and was a county versus a city jurisdiction so um, those results aren't in the dashboard, but they're in those separate reports linked down below. So you can kind of see that separate breakdown for those. Um, but overall, we rank pretty well. And if you look at all the questions nationally, um, we had ranked 20, 21 of the categories. We ranked higher, 80 were similar range, and then 24 lower. And then when you look at our comparison to the 18 counties, we had 24 categories higher. 67 similar and six lower so when you look at our county comparison we did score very well in most categories so yeah they were great results so yeah thanks casey this is uh this is a fantastic tool so uh, i hope folks uh avail themselves of it if uh we still have uh members of the media on the line take a take a look at this 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 surely warrants some uh, big headline coverage out there. So <laughs> thanks, Casey. This is great. Yep. Thank you. Have a great day. You bet. OK, next we have tribal land exemptions. Uh, who is going to lead us into this uh, brief discussion? We, we got some correspondence the other day about this, and I felt like we needed a little bit more context to understand uh, uh, what this amounts to. Uh, if you'd like, Commissioner Strohmeyer, I can do that. Yeah, Tyler, go ahead. Unless somebody else wants to. <laughs> um, no, go ahead. So this is, a, there, there's only one property in Missoula County that this affects. Uh, it's the Council Groves that CSKT got in 2015. Um, they, I'm not entirely clear on the paperwork um, because that's all handled at the Department of Revenue at the state level. It's not even the local Department of Revenue. Um, but my understanding is that sometime shortly after that, they applied to have the land moved from fee land to trust land, um, which would make it exempt from state taxes. And there is a statute that was adopted in 2011 
that provides um, fee land is taxable, trust land is not. Um, and that statute provided that during the application process, because they have to apply to the Department of the Interior uh, or BIA, I think, um, that during that application process, uh, they would also be exempt from taxes. This, the, the exemption only applies for five years and they have to provide a bunch of um, supporting documentation to indicate that they have applied and that the application is pending. And then if the application has not been acted on within five years, then the exemption is removed. The part that I'm not really clear on is that this particular parcel of land was actually taxed um, in 2016 through 2019. In 2020, uh, the taxes were removed. And so I have that question into, I sent it to our local Department of Revenue. Um, and of course, they don't know anything about it because it's handled at the state. So I also sent it to the state um, and have not heard back. So, so that's pretty much Tyler, where that do we, lies. Do we have the ability, because I have no desire to collect taxes from the tribes on, on this property, which I'm, I, I'm sure at some point will probably be converted into trust status. Uh, do we have the ability to not uh, uh, collect tax on it? Or once this exemption period, uh, um, the, the five year period over which time, it, it sounds like we were still collecting taxes on it, uh, but, but once that expires, are our hands tied? Do, do they have to pay up or? Our, our hands are tight, something that's handled at the state level, so it's an assessment issue, um, and we wouldn't have the authority to, to say you don't have to pay taxes. It's not a ton of tax money. Um, I think the entire tax bill, the highest it ever was, was $250 per year, um, and a substantial portion of that is forest fire protection, which is um, something that I'm not really clear, again, whether they would pay that if it goes into trust or not, um, but it was assessed when they were exempt last year. Um, the one thing that I will say is if, if the exemption should have applied for those years that they were paying tax, then they would be entitled to a refund. Um, so that might help going forward. But do, do they, are they aware that, uh, that, that that's the case or, uh, and would they have to, uh, uh, as, as other folks oftentimes do uh, uh, apply for uh, some sort of a uh, refund? To my knowledge, they're not aware, but um, I also don't know because I haven't heard back from the state if they, for some reason, didn't submit a piece of information that was necessary for that exemption. Um, so it's possible that they really weren't eligible in the years that they paid taxes. But in the event that they were not eligible, then generally speaking, Department of Revenue would fix that, but they would have to request, the tribe would need to request the money from the commissioners. Um, but I think we could make them aware of that and see if they wanted to request that. Okay. Well, I guess once you get additional information from the state, uh, I, I think we ought to let them, let the tribes know. <clears throat> and what's, sure. the, what's the timeline, Tyler? Do you think that you would get a response from the state? Like how long are you comfortable waiting? <laughs> I would expect it to be fairly quick. Like I said, the local folks have already gotten back to me. It's the um, Linda Sather handles it for the Department of Revenue at, in Helena. Um, and in my experience, she's been fairly quick. I actually only recently realized that it was that because I had only looked at the 2020 taxes. Um, when I went back further was only um, earlier this morning. So I would expect that it will be in the next couple of days. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. sure. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Did anyone else have anything to add on this one, Andrew or Chris? OK, apparently not. All right. Uh, always good to be joined by our very own county treasurer, clerk and recorder, Tyler Grenant. Thanks. Um, so next we have a Dominic Hyde versus Northern Rockies Heritage Center. Um, at all, and I think Missoula County's in there somewhere. Uh, is this who's talking about this from our county attorney's office? And is this something we need to close the meeting for? Commissioners, this is John Hart from the county attorney's office. And no, we don't need to close the meeting for this. Um, I just thought I'd take this opportunity to um, let folks know who don't already know uh, why 
these uh, uh, lawsuits show up on as a discussion item on our admin meeting, public meetings from time to time. Um, in 2016, the commission adopted uh, civil litigation policy 2016-02, and that uh, policy, when Missoula County or any of its employees are named in a lawsuit, that requires our office, the Office of County Attorney, to do, and I'm going to read to you. Uh, the County Attorney's Office shall review each case to determine, A, if there is a conflict of interest that would prevent the County Attorney's Office from representing Missoula County, or B, if the County Attorney's Office has the internal capacity to represent Missoula County, and then finally, we review to see if the county attorney's office has the expertise to represent Missoula County. So that's um, that's what I have done. That's what our office has done for purposes of each of the three lawsuits that are listed on the agenda. And and we don't have a conflict. Um, we have the expertise and capacity to to uh, represent the the county in these cases. And so. Uh, that litigation uh, policy goes on to require us to come before you and just uh, make a report on on that. So that's what I'm doing this morning, and that's what we do periodically. Uh, the first the first lawsuit. Let me let me take a look at the agenda. Um, the first lawsuit listed is Dominic Hyde v. Northern Woods Heritage Center. And yes, Commissioner Strohmeyer, you're correct. Um, Missoula County is also named in that lawsuit. Uh, this is a this is a lawsuit that involves an individual who um, fell and, and injured himself when he attended a wedding at uh, the Heritage Hall out at Fort Missoula. And our office uh, will represent and defend Missoula County in that lawsuit. Uh, the Northern Heritage, uh, Northern Rockies Heritage Center has separate counsel. I should also mention, I'm going to be very, very brief in telling you about these cases. Uh, that's the reason we don't have to close the meeting. Um, we're not going to talk about our strategy and or, or, or anything else about how we're going to defend the county in these lawsuits. Um, our office will do that with you on uh, January 27th when we have our quarterly litigation uh, update with the commission and other county officials. And that will be that will be a meeting that we'll <clears throat> recommend is closed because we'll discuss litigation strategy. So the second uh, the second lawsuit that's listed there is a Menges v. Fox and others. Um, the defendant Fox is, of course, the the past uh, attorney general, Tim Fox. But there was also a, a deputy uh, sh a sheriff, uh, Malachi, who's now known by the last name of Jessup, who was uh, identified in that lawsuit. Uh, since the time we put this on the agenda, um, the attorney general's office has notified us that they will be defending um, Malachi's interests and the county's interests in this lawsuit. And so uh, M Missoula County Attorney's Office does not need to appear and de defend this particular deputy. Uh, she'll be adequately defended by the state. Um, the third and final <clears throat> lawsuit referenced in the agenda is Cooney v. Reilly. And this is a, this is a, um, an interesting lawsuit. So Missoula County is named as a third party defendant. What happened is Scott Cooney uh, in 2018 filed a lawsuit against uh, Shane Reilly and the Goodrich and Reilly law firm and also named Territorial Landworks as a defendant uh, arising out of some, some problems with a townhouse development that was proposed within the city of Missoula. Um, that lawsuit has been pending for some time, and now uh, Mr. Reilly and his law firm uh, 
have turned around and filed uh, complaints against uh, the Missoula County Clerk and Recorder and the City of Missoula and also uh, local real estate agent Jesse Egan. Um, and the claims against Missoula County are that uh, the clerk and recorder uh, in some way was negligent in discharging his duties. And if, um, if Mr. Reilly is found to uh, be liable to Mr. Cooney, that then Missoula County should share in that liability and contribute uh, to paying for that liability. Our office, again, is going to defend um, Tyler Gurnant, the clerk and recorder, and, um, and we'll be handling that. And again, we'll provide uh, more detail about that lawsuit and our litigation strategy coming up on January 27th. So that's that's the end of my report. And uh, I, I'd answer any questions, but again, I'm not going to go into any detail. <laughs> I would expect nothing less from one of our esteemed deputy county attorneys. So thanks, John. Thank we look you. forward look forward to hearing more later in the month. Great. Okay, we are running really short on time. We've only got a minute here uh, left. Anything legislatively we need to discuss? Uh, commissioners, the only thing uh, I'll just jump really quick. Our bill. Uh, related to county authority to lease land is up next week and if possible we'd like one of you to testify uh, during that if if one of you has a strong preference as to who that might be since josh I, isn't here we can make josh do it <laughs> <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds like a good plan yeah, Unless, it, does, it doesn't matter to me i guess just take a look at our schedules and see how it aligns we, we will work on coordinating that and anything else can can certainly hold so, okay, thanks. Anything communication wise we need to discuss or COVID-19? I think there's a lot going on in the world of COVID-19 relative to vaccinations today. I think there's a press conference perhaps this afternoon and I know our type three incident management team is having their uh, kickoff later this afternoon and I'll be attending that. Anything else? John Hart, you're back. I was going to mention, I believe the City County Health Board is having an emergency meeting this afternoon at one o'clock uh, to discuss COVID related issues. Okay. Anything else, anyone, before we sign off? Okay. Well, that was an, another, yet another action packed meeting of our uh, admin. Uh, meeting so thanks everyone have a great day uh, have a great long weekend if uh, we don't talk between now and the end of this week all right thanks everyone goodbye thank you